It's time now to explore the benefits and challenges of creating a more diverse, equitable and inclusive financial industry. Later this evening, Cyboss hosts a major networking event dedicated to helping deliver change for the better in the sector. And joining us now to look at this in more detail are Priya Bajora, a Senior Vice President, Head of Financial Services, East Coast and Canada at Publicis Sapient. Uh, Luciana Masoya, a Global Head of Visa Platforms, XB Solutions, and uh, Amir, a General Manager for Visa XB Solutions at Visa. And Camille Papillard, Head of Financial Intermediaries at Corporate Clients Line, Amir Security Services at BMP Paribas. Welcome to you all. Bit of a mouthful, but I think I got through <laughs> all of those. Uh, I'll start with you, Camille. Uh, we can talk about the company engagements from a broad point of view, but what about you personally? How have you been uh, impacted by BNP per uh, Paribas uh, initiatives? Yeah, I've been impacted and hopefully I'm also impacting a bit uh, diversity at, at BNP. So personally, I've benefited from a program um, called Jamais Sans Elle. So it's uh, never without her. So it's a charter that we signed. Um, it's a program that um, aims at uh, fostering gender uh, diversity. So it's promoted by entrepreneurs, organizations in the uh, digital banking industry, politics as well. Um, and so folks who are used to participate in public discussions and panels, events, um, and they now refuse to participate in these uh, discussions and events if there is no woman on stage. Mm. Um, and so we obviously we also apply to you apply it to us internally. And uh, this is how I got the opportunity when I was not that senior to participate in, for instance, client events. And that gave me good visibility internally. So that really helped. Mm. Um, and maybe the other way around, I'm now trying maybe to give in return. Um, and so I'm participating to a program that is called One Million Hour to Help. So the idea is to give a little bit of time to employees to um, uh, work with uh, NGOs or associations um, to participate to uh, a more diverse, um, more ESG driven uh, world. And, um, and this is how I'm mentoring uh, young adults, uh, young women actually, and that I chose to, to mentor, uh, who live in, um, in the suburb area where our um, offices are based, um, in the northeast part of Paris. Um, and so there are, there are women who are entering the labor market and who need a bit of uh, guidance and help uh, building their network. Mm. Luciana, can you talk a little bit about how Visa is advocating for inclusivity in regions where it may be lacking? Absolutely, and I think at Visa, inclusivity is part of our business purpose. So obviously it matters very much for us to have economies that are thriving and communities that can grow by having access to financial services and education. So to me, it always starts with the education bit of it because it's easy to say, here's access to infrastructure, maybe not that easy, but still, once you have the access to the infrastructure, you also need to provide the education and the context. So we have a program called Practical Money Skills that we deliver around the world. It's been delivered in about 40 countries, 18 different languages. And it's just the basics of how do you manage money? How do you think about budgets um, so that we can provide that foundation? It then goes into programs like She's Next, which is a women's entrepreneur focused program where women entrepreneurs come and compete for investments. We also partner with I, find, I Fund Women, which is a um, plat digital platform that funds investments for women entrepreneurs and is just another way to give access and provide more equity into the economy. And then something that's near and dear to my everyday role in cross-border payments where I've spent a number of years working is just seeing the impact that you can have on an individual or a business who maybe didn't have access to sending money to their family abroad and being able to provide that or a business who all of a sudden have, has access to digital global commerce and the tools that previously were not available to them to broaden that market. It's incredibly rewarding to be part of that journey. Bria, generative AI, it's been a big topic at this year's Cybos. It's predicted to radically change uh, the workforce. 
of the future uh, and women may be particularly at risk within this. What's your opinion on the topic, if I can ask you that? And, uh, and what skills do you think the, the workforce of the future would need to thrive? Uh, John, generative AI has been a predominant theme at this conference. And honestly, I believe that this is an opportunity of a lifetime because this is going to be a game changer in the times to come. And it is also going to reshape the workforce of the future, regardless of gender. Mm -hmm. So while women, we believe that women may be at risk, but I think it is, it is the time is now to identify what are the new opportunities, how do we upskill as organizations, and how do we upskill ourselves personally to make sure that we stay relevant in the future. Mm. Uh, we at Publicis Sapient believe uh, that data and AI is certainly an area worth investing in. And this is creating a lot of new opportunities, and we've been discussing this over the last couple of days, whether it's prompt engineering, whether it's teaching the models to do the right thing. It's testing what the models are returning, and how do you infuse the human intellect, the business context, to make sure that the data that you're getting with your AI co-pilot is relevant to your clients and to your business needs. And I think that's where the big opportunity is, and I remain very optimistic about the future of that. Mm. Camille, within the financial industry, there are a lot of different skills uh, that are needed across a variety of different roles, but the participation in those roles isn't always balanced. So how's BNP Paribas working to improve that balanced uh, representation in IT and technology? So maybe before going to, to IT, um, um, I would like to insist on the fact that um, France and actually BNP Paribas as well are a, a bit ahead of on, on these uh, on these um, topics. So there's a, a French law that sets uh, some um, targets uh, for uh, gender diversity in um, senior positions, but also in uh, exco, uh, so in, in, in uh, executive committees. Um, and so it's, uh, it's gonna be 30% for senior positions and 50%, I think, for, and 40%, sorry, for um, executive committees uh, by and to be reached by 2030. Um, and um, as a group and as a French group, uh, we're, we'll try to be a bit ahead of schedule. And so uh, we are targeting 50% of women uh, in the executive committee by uh, 2025. 20, uh, it's quite ambitious, but uh, uh, this is how you also progress. And, and, and how do we want to reach that? It's also by making sure that um, in every layer of the organization, we also have targets. And so it starts with the recruiting of uh, interns and graduates. We make sure, so it's here it's not a target, we just make sure that we hire 50% of women. And then in the talent program, um, for the, 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 the youngest uh, to the, the top uh, talent, we make sure uh, we have 50% of women and same for senior positions. And, and this is how we're going to reach uh, these ambitious targets. Now coming to IT, uh, this, is, uh, this is an area where uh, diversity and, and especially diverse, um, gender diversity is not always easy to, to meet. Um, so we're trying to promote some initiatives like um, um, some networking, like uh, we have a uh, women in IT. Um, so this is a network of uh, women who meet internally, but who also meet with other companies. And this is how you exchange on good practices. And this is also what we're, we, we, we're doing here. Um, and the idea is also to have ambassadors who go to universities uh, to explain to young ladies ladies that yes, they have um, their uh, place in, uh, in, in IT. And um, diversity and inclusion is not just about gender, right? So, um, um, so typically IT is a, a place where we try to open up to more diverse profile. Uh, so we are partnering with a company, uh, so a specialized uh, recruiting company um, to hire a uh, profile uh, who suffer from uh, autism uh, spectrum disorders. Um, and so typically in some uh, IT tasks, uh, they, they can do very good. Luciano, on uh, Camille's point there, uh, strides towards LGBTQ plus inclusivity and representation on the world stage 
uh, has been undeniable of like yet lingering challenges in some areas, reminders of the intricate interplay between personal identity and professional space. How is Visa fostering an inclusive environment at the moment that supports LGBTQ plus uh, employees? Yeah, we've actually made a lot of efforts in that area and I'm happy to say for us, it's just part of building a global company that's inclusive for everybody. So it's key to our workforce, but it's also key in how we think about products and services that we deliver in markets and how we interact with our clients wherever they are in the world. Um, when you look at how you bridge that gap between the personal and the professional, it's about making people comfortable to bring their best, to have the skills, to feel included. And we've done a lot in supporting the UN standards on LGBTI and working within our own walls to make sure that across different parts of the organization we have representation. We've been recognized, I think, for eight years in a row at this point by the Human Rights Committee on um, the, the global equality um, standards on that. And so it's, it's nice to see that recognition, but I think more importantly, it's just about being human and it's mm -hmm. about bringing, bringing yourself to, to your place of employment. We all feel really passionate about what we do. And um, if you can't show up as who you are, it, there's always something lacking there. So um, yeah. Uh, Priya, I want to come back to the topic of AI. Johnny asked you uh, about the ways that women may be at risk because of it, but also uh, it can be used. So how can financial services firms use AI to move closer to achieving diversity, equity, and inclusion goals? So we, we spoke earlier in this conversation, uh, Luciana mentioned about financial literacy and how important that is to help with financial independence and eventually gender equity. Where I think AI can really help um, you know, turbocharge the financial literacy effort is meeting the potential customers where they are in their terms of understanding financial services, simplifying access to that knowledge, and meeting it at a personalized level, customized to their needs. And I think it's a win-win for the organizations because it opens up a whole new platform of making financial services available to the unbanked, and then it also helps them move their diversity goals forward. The typical AI uh, algorithms on the employee front, we've seen a lot of organizations experiment with where you believe that AI algorithms can help eliminate, reduce the biases during the hiring process and provide the transparency and provide the visibility into a consistent hiring process. And I think those al algorithms are still work in progress, but I think those are two use cases I wanted to talk about, one on the customer front and the other on employees. I want to thank all three of you for being with us to speak on this important topic. We could talk for ages, but we do have to leave it there. Priya Bajoria, Senior Vice President, Head of Financial Services, East Coast and Canada at Publicis Sapient. Luciana Mosoya, Global Head of Visa Platforms, XP Solutions, and EMEA, General Manager for Visa, XP Solutions at Visa. And Camille Papillon, Head of Financial Intermediaries and Corporate Clients Line, EMEA Security Services at BNP Paribas. All very important roles, so we <laughs> want to make sure we name them all. Thank Thank you to the three of you and we hope uh, you enjoy uh, these last uh, two days at Cybos. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.